know, I'm sure that you also want to hear about the Fugo balloons from Japan. We have a, a lot of new Fugo information. Uh, for those of you who've never heard of the Fugo balloons, at the end of the Second World War, the Japanese had this scheme of bombing the United States with balloons, and they built 9,000 balloons, and they filled them with uh, hydrogen, which is very explosive, and loaded them down with bombs and sent them across the Pacific, which was 3,000 miles, by the, the Gulf Stream. And some of these balloons actually reached the United States and dropped their bombs on the United States. And these balloons, most of them self-destructed. They were designed to self-destruct. But a couple of hundred of them, did, for various reasons, did not self-destruct. And they landed in different parts of the uh, West, especially, and where the uh, government retrieved them. And this started a lot of the rumors of government secrecy and strange objects coming out of the sky. <clears throat> and uh, the Japanese call these balloons Fugo balloons. And as I pointed out before and in some articles, it's very likely that what was found at Roswell, New Mexico, was a, the remains of a Fugo balloon. There are seven museums in the United States that have a display of Fugo balloons. Uh, the Smithsonian had a fully rigged Fugo balloon on display for some years. And some of the museums in, the, in Oregon and Washington have Fugo balloon material on display. So anyone who reads the books on Roswell if you're really interested in it, you can go to one of these museums and see the kind of material that was found at Roswell, because it fits the description of the Roswell witnesses exactly. Only at Roswell did they think that it was something else. Usually when they find a Fugo balloon, they, people are smart enough to figure out, gee, it must be a balloon. At Roswell, they said, gee, it must be a flying saucer. <clears throat> We're still finding these damn things. In North Dakota in 1990, they found one in the Black Hills that had probably been there for 45 years. And uh, they found the remains of it. Of course, after 45 years, a lot of it had just rotted away. But they found enough so they could identify it as a Fugo balloon. In 1990, the Japanese television network sent a camera team to the United States, and they toured the United States. And they interviewed all the Fugo balloon witnesses who were still alive. There were a lot of them. And then they did a two-hour documentary on Fugo balloons on December 7, 1991. And the, their, their approach was, uh, gee, we're, we're sorry we did this. And the Japanese school children last year made thousands of origami you know, origami birds and things out of paper, and sent this to Oregon, to the state of Oregon, as a gift in, in tribute to the people. Some people in Oregon had been killed by these bombs as a tribute to these people who had died in the Fugo balloon attacks. There is a uh, college professor here in the United States who is Japanese, and I can't pronounce his name, but he sort of made a hobby out of the Fugo balloons, and he's the leading expert on it, and he's talked to all the witnesses. After I did some articles on it, we got some strange letters from people who recalled seeing these during the war and after the war. And I got three letters in particular that are very interesting and that was now checking out. People who claimed that some of these balloons were manned, and they saw these balloons one woman was living near Hanford, which is an atomic bomb plant. And she saw this balloon very close to the ground, and there, there was something in it that she thought at first was a monkey. And when she got closer to it, she realized that it was a little man. And of course, Japanese were small in stature. And if you're going to build uh, balloons to cross the Pacific, you want a small person, lightweight person, to be in them. And she said that right after she saw, watched this balloon bounce across the landscape and fly away, uh, uh, several jeeps pulled up with uh, American soldiers in them. And one of the officers asked her not to mention this to anybody. This was a practice at the time. They didn't want the Japanese to find out that these balloons were getting here. 
and so they kept most of it out of the newspapers. And this started, in a way, a lot of our men in black kind of stories that we later heard in, in the uh, UFO field. Because the, uh, the FBI also would uh, call students together in a schoolroom and warn them that these, these bomb, balloon bombs were coming and that if they ever saw one, they should not you know, uh, spread the news. They should keep it to themselves. <clears throat> one, one, uh, one of these balloons did get into a very small newspaper out west. And within two weeks, the story appeared in the Japanese newspapers in Japan. That's how good their spy system was. So the, the government plan to keep it a secret was quite effective. And there are books about this secrecy, They're very well-documented books. There's one by a man named Bert Weber called The Silent Siege. But if, if the Japanese were able to send over even a few men, manned balloons, then we would have another explanation for a lot of the stories that came out immediately after the war of the government picking up little men from the desert and so on. Uh, there, there are a number of these stories that are being revived now by the, the Roswell fans. It's very likely that maybe a dozen of these balloons had been man, because they were planning to do that on a big scale, but they never did it. That is, they didn't send over thousands of balloons with men in them, but they may have sent over a few half dozen or a dozen just to see if it would work. And that, that's probably what uh, all of these stories are about. We know that uh, there was one crash saucer story from Mexico that was a fuga balloon story, but at the time nobody knew about fuga balloons. And uh, the American Army went into Mexico and, and carried out the remains of the Fugo Balloon. And it, uh, the story appears in Frank Scully's book, which was published in 1915.